Hey everybody, Adam Grimm here, owner of Sparrow Websites. I've got Chris Bradley, owner of Namespark. Hey everyone. So we've collaborated on a lot of projects in the past and worked together for a while. And um, we were both talking on Friday actually, and we've just had some clients that have just been um, hit really hard with the uh, the new coronavirus, with the shutdowns that are happening in a lot of states here. So we wanted to get together and share what we're finding work um, for our clients and, um, and just some tips that will hopefully um, get you through this, get the small businesses, you know, back up and running as quickly as possible, um, or even leverage this time to, um, to their advantage um, to actually get some, some growth or at least just some operational developments and marketing developments um, while things are shut down right now. So, so I'll start off, Chris. One of the things that we've found um, has been just, you know, in this short period of time has been helpful content. So it really has hurt. So from a number standpoint, um, we're seeing so far, most of the websites that we follow are about 20, down 25% year over year. So this March is about 25% lower than it was last March. Um, and and we only anticipate that for the people that aren't doing anything, that, that could actually get worse. Um, but I will say we've, there's been one bright spot. And I'm curious to hear more about you because you know way more about the social side of this than I do. But the people that are sharing social content, there are five people we've been watching that have been sharing really helpful content. We can talk more later about what that looks like, um, but they are up anywhere from 100 to 200% year over year. Um, so for the people that are actually, and, and they're not they're not being sales or anything, they're just putting out really informational tips and things like that. Um, and for them, it really seems to be helping in the short term, at least as far as traffic is concerned. Um, but I'm curious, I've been talking too much already. You know, you're the, the social expert. Chris has got an MBA in digital marketing, super knowledgeable guy. So I'm curious to pick your brain what are you saying on the this business side of this? Yeah, that's a great uh, lead in, Adam. And I like to hear what you're saying as far as what you're seeing on your end. Uh, basically, what's going on right now is we're going, this is a massive change. And, you know, and people are trying to find a new normal. And you know what that means is new behaviors. So what I recommend and what I'm recommending to our clients right now at Namespark is to continue your current frequency, um, but change up the content that you're sharing. Basically, let's shift the content strategy that you have prior to this. And, and what does that mean? So I'm thinking be helpful and provide value. Mm -hmm. um, what does your current customers and your current audience need from you right now? Um, scarcity is the greatest enemy and makes foes of all of us. So you don't want to be looked at as that guy that was selling, selling, selling the entire time while everybody else was struggling. Um, I'm also talking about using supportive, encouraging um, content. And also, let's just make someone smile. There's nothing wrong with uh, sharing something that's got a little humor behind it. And then the last thing is less sales. And this is a touchy subject because, I mean, I follow a lot of marketing influencers all over the web. And some, like Marcus Sheridan uh, tweeted yesterday about, you know, if you don't, if somebody tells you to stop your marketing and stop selling, they've never signed a paycheck. Whereas on the other end, Christopher Penn has an outstanding video right out right now where he talks about shifting your marketing and he talks about, you know, less selling and more, more supportive, more encouraging, more helpful content. Um, but I will say that Christopher Penn said it best when he said, whether or not you're a leader in your industry, act like you are. In the long term, you know, basically what is best for your company um, I'm sorry, what is best for the people who give you value as a, as a customer? Temporarily put aside what is best for your company or make it secondary. Um, you know, ask yourself, what would a true le good leader do in a situation like this? And, and from our angle, looking at social media marketing and email marketing and social media advertising, how can you shift that to be more like that? Um, the other thing, just in terms of what you talked about um, with numbers, what we're seeing, at least for the last seven days, and again, this is a very short period of time, and a lot, <clears throat> a lot has happened over the last several days, but we're definitely, definitely seeing, uh, especially for some of our bigger clients, um, a drop in reach, engagement, likes, and followers on social media. So I do feel like this last week has been chaos, um, but I do feel like people are spending more time on their computers and they're spending more time on social media. So even though those numbers don't necessarily back it up, I do feel like social media has never been more important than it is right now because this is how you can communicate or the easiest way to communicate with your current customers. Hmm. Um, and I want to ask you too, I know I'm not asking for um, specific advice or anything, but just from what you've seen so far, um, the Facebook ad side, do, do you anticipate or do you have a rough guess? Um, and, and we're not going to hold you to this because it's you know, yeah. crazy times. But on the ad space, do you anticipate, you know, more inventory, fewer people doing some ads right now? 
Um, do, you have, do you have any kind of guesses on what, what might happen there for the people that have a Facebook ad strategy? Yeah, I definitely see fewer or inventory being more abundant, at least for the time being, because I think a lot of, uh, especially small and medium businesses, they're shutting down all ads. There's a number of reasons for that. Obviously, there's the whole less salesy type thing, but even more importantly, they're they're holding close their pocketbooks, you know, in their their wallets. We don't know what the future holds. We don't know. Small businesses are struggling. They're being shut down, so they're not really going to invest as much in ads. Um, so I would say at least for the short term, maybe the next couple of months, Facebook ads, the inventory is going to be, um, there's going to be more inventory and it's going to be an easier place to um, advertise than it has been over the last couple of months, especially over Christmas. Yeah. Well, I mean, so that, so the person that has the right, you know, uh, non-salesy, but really helpful campaign running right now, mm -hmm. uh, it sounds like there could be, and we don't know for sure, but could be an opportunity to potentially get some cheap, some cheap ads out there. Um, and reach a, a greater audience with that message of whoever you're helping right now. Is that, you know, a, a possibility? Very true. Yes. And I do agree with that strategy. We have a client right now who's selling a book and it's an important amount of information and educational information for people. But it actually comes at a time where it's even more important because it deals with healthcare. And what we're seeing from his end is um, definitely much higher numbers than we may typically see when inventories at a low or, or there's much more competition for eyeballs for the ads themselves. Gotcha. Yeah, that's um, and and then flipping back and forth, but flipping to the organic side, um, I will say one thing we've seen just as far as web content specifically, not social, but the people that are specifically addressing what's going on right now seem to be doing a lot better. Like the people that are just kind of you know continuing with whatever they were going to post you know three weeks ago, their engagement seems to have dropped a lot from what I'm seeing as far as traffic. But the people that are specifically saying, hey, you know, Corona's happening, and here's how we can help. Um, you know, the virus is out there and, and here's how we can help, or you're stuck at home and here's how we can help, whatever the situation is, um, seem to be a lot better. Is that, are you finding that at all? I mean, does it, does it make sense to actually be, be aware and specifically talk about what's going on right now instead of your traditional message? Or would you say just kind of stay the course uh, with where you were? No, I do agree with that strategy. And, and for those of you who are watching this, please don't like, that's why we're here. We're talking to you about this. I mean, I don't think any of us expected you to jump on this bandwagon last week when you're scrambling to figure out if you're even going to be open and things. So going forward, what Adam and tried to say is, you know, this is an important time where you can do this and you can be a thought leader and you can be supportive. You can be encouraging and helpful. And yes, exactly what you said, Adam, they're, they're the ones that are going to come out on the other end um, looking like the companies again that, that we all want to do business with because they were the ones that stepped it up they were the ones that created helpful content and even lending a helping hand in the community, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, that's very important. And in these social numbers that we're seeing right now, again, they're after the first week of chaos. So I know we've had several weeks of chaos, but when you think about in terms of like really what's happened in the last seven to 10 days, those numbers probably are going to change over the next month or two. And what I mean by that is those clients, like, like you said, Adam, those, those uh, businesses that are actually pushing forth and doing some really cool stuff and becoming thought leaders in this space are going to see different kinds of numbers. Awesome. What about um, any creative ideas, anything you're seeing out there that was particularly worth mentioning as far as uh, the stuff people are doing? Yeah. So, I mean, just a couple quick ideas because I mean, I'm the type when I watch webinars or I watch podcasts and, and marketing influencers or marketing people talk about, yeah, you could do this, but they don't give any actual tangible ideas. That it, that's frustrating. So I wanted to give some ideas. You know, obviously, Facebook Live broadcasts is something that's been a while, around for a while, but you can really use those now. I mean, I, just the number of things that you can do with Facebook Live is amazing. Even just like you said, broadcasting from your home an update about your business or something important that your your customers find in your that space. Um, using Instagram and Facebook Stories to your advantage. I mean, there's any number of things that you could be doing with Stories to remain relevant, staying in front of your customers and your audience, and um, maybe things that you've never done before, but even just being able to take some time to understand how to use Instagram and Facebook stories. Um, printable coloring pages. So this is a funny one. Um, my wife and my two daughters and I are sitting down this afternoon and we're going to create actually some uh, coloring pages for our clients and, and for Namespark clients. And I'm going to actually put those out there on the web. And 
people can download them and give them to their kids to color. And we have some really cool ideas. So things like that are kind of out of the box. Um, sharing local resources. Obviously, everybody has different situations and the locations that they're in. So being able to share what's specific to those and obviously thinking about where your customers are at, too. Um, focusing on positive news, like sharing what positive things that are happening right now, because the media is focusing on all the negative, um, and for good reason, because they have to, they have to give us the information. But if you could focus on some of the positive things that are happening, and then, like I said, using humor, um, don't be afraid to use humor. Uh, I had a friend send this to me this week, and it's absolutely brilliant. And some of you may have seen this, some of you may have not, but there's a uh, rugby announcer who's obviously not working right now because sports is out of commission. And what he's doing is he's just going out and about and doing like commentary of regular everyday life, and it's absolutely hilarious. Like he'll be in a park, and he's like, and he's and he uses humor with it too, and he has this, you know, English uh, deep. Uh, announcer accent and, and those kind of things just make people laugh um and then thinking in terms of like maybe some industries or some spaces like i work with a co-working space and you know us sharing information that is helpful to entrepreneurs like small business loan information tax extension info anything that a small business owner who literally has their office space there um, sharing with that information with them on social media is helpful. Um, travel and tourism. I have several travel and tourism clients. So you could provide an experience. Um, if you could ex provide an experience in someone's home that through a Facebook live broadcast, for instance, that's similar to what they would be experiencing if they weren't shut in the side, that could be a positive. Um, I mean, I work with a hot air balloon company and we're actually thinking about on a Facebook Live from the hot air balloon, which I think would get people really excited as they're sitting in their homes and they can't get outside. Um, and even right. the corners of the of the hot air balloon basket is that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, and even golf courses like offering. What about offering a free solo round to people? Um, I don't know. Like, I know it's not necessarily fun to go out and golf by yourself, but. If it's free and you can get out of the house, well, wouldn't that be something fun you could do? And again, this is assuming that golf courses are open, um, which right now it appears in Pennsylvania anyway, a lot of them are not allowed to be open. So that's just some ideas, um, not to go too far in the weeds with ideas, but just some things to think, this is a time when you can get really creative and it's pretty awesome that you can do that and use it to your advantage on social media and it's free. Yeah. No, that's great. And I, I will say, too, um, we're compiling a list of free resources um, on our website, too. And I know a lot of people are. But if there's anything out there, anybody hears this that you'd like us to promote for you and list on our site um, to help you just get some attention, show how you're helping the community. Um, we would be more than happy to post post a link to your website and um, and let you know what's out there. So but I, I agree, Chris. We've seen some great companies sharing really cool stuff out there and seeing people come together. So, yeah, no, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, any other, so, and then let, just talking about specifically how people are engaging in the community. Um, you know, I've seen some really cool stuff out there. We've seen some cleaning companies that are willing to help um, disinfect a little bit. So some of these grocery stores and stuff that don't really know how to properly disinfect. So we've got a cleaning company that's gonna go in and just specifically do that for them, help them kind of, you know, keep things, keep chronic bay. Um, just some cool stuff like that. Anything you're seeing out there, um, any kind of community involvement stuff you're seeing? You mentioned some, some already, I know, but. Well, yeah, I saw one yesterday that I thought was awesome. Uh, Permani Brothers out in Pittsburgh um, is partnering with Giant Eagle. And basically what's happening is Permani Brothers is, you know, they're, they don't need to be as staffed as highly because they're just doing uh, takeout. But Giant Eagle is having staffing problems. They can't keep up. So Permani Brothers is actually going to let some of their workers go over and work at Giant Eagle, which is a win-win for everybody because then, you know, the the workers don't have to be laid off. Um, Giant Eagle can keep up with the demand and Permani Brothers doesn't have to lay off their employees. I thought that was awesome. There's some really good ones out there. I agree with you. Um, I would just say when, when you're looking at it right now, like how can you help? And, and don't be afraid to share with your customers and your audience how you're helping on social media and maybe in an email. I know some people are always afraid like to look like they're, you know, they're pounding their chest or, or braggadocious about these things. But honestly, like, when it comes to the end, like 
those of us consumers, we want to we want to um, buy things and and um, be customers of uh, companies who actually did something when times got tough. You know, there's a lot of people on social media right now that are complaining, and I'm just like, you know what? What are you doing to help the situation? That's what's important right now. And the same thing for businesses. I mean, get out there. If there's anything you can do to help the situation, don't be afraid to talk about it because that's what we want to hear about. You know, um, I'm sick of seeing all the negative on social media. I want to see some positive. So when I saw that Primanti Brothers and Giant Eagle post yesterday, it, it like made my day. So I think when you think in terms of that, you don't think as much about worrying about whether you're pounding your chest or being braggadocious. You're actually thinking like you're communicating what you're doing. And that's that's held in a high regard to your customers. By that, could, that could inspire the next person to do something great for their community, too. So Very true. Especially in, in the area that we're in, there's a fear of, of appearing prideful, you know, but, but yeah. you're right. you're just to share that it's a cool story. So just get out there and share it, you know, um, and yeah, encourage other people. I, I love that. It makes a lot of yeah. sense. No, I, I think it's a great idea. And I, and I, I don't know, there's some businesses out there that are thinking about it, I'm sure, but I feel like there's more that aren't thinking that way right now. And that, that's why I wanted to, one of the primary reasons why I wanted to do this video today was to get that information out there. Um, yeah, I really appreciate it because I've heard like two very extreme cases where some people are just burying their head in their sand and saying, hey, we don't want to look like we're promotional. So there's disappearing. And that's really dangerous. <laughs> I love the ideas you shared. And then, of course, like we said, the other extreme, some people are just way too salesy. And, you know, I've got some cold emails that are just so frustrating, you know, like now's the time to buy kind of thing. So but I think yeah. businesses that can walk that middle line and, and all the things you just said, share value mm -hmm. in their community. Those are the people that we're going to trust going coming out of this and that we're going to be going to continue to do business after this all passes so yeah i think if you could do that you still need to sell you got we all got to stay in business but if you could have a nice little fine line there between your selling and you're actually like helping i think people are much more prone to be okay with you selling when you're helping as well it's when you're not doing one or the other that you know that people can can um look you know down a little bit on your business and maybe think twice before they purchase from you again um it's it's a tough situation. We, it's we've never been in this before. So as a marketer, how can we tell you what to do or what not to do? Well, all we can do is look at what we feel like has worked better in the past in these types of situations where it's like there's a downturn in the economy or there's a situation, you know, a terrorist attack or something like. These are times where you actually have to think outside the box and and being able to have that fine line between selling and helping. I think that's the important part. The important thing to take away from here and also get creative. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, I love that, Chris. Uh, we could talk about this all day, but um, and we'll stay in touch. But I really appreciate you taking some time. Um, we'll get this out there and share this with our customers, and hopefully, it's useful for your customers. But I just, again, I really appreciate it. We want to kind of encourage our customers, encourage people around us that this is a time that you know can truly be a place we come together and we help each other, and then great things can come from this. And I love your optimism and all your ideas. So thanks. No, thanks for inviting me. I appreciate it. Appreciate it.